Hey guys, so in the last video, maybe there were a few of you thinking to yourselves, oh, what the hell is Joe saying? What's this whole in and out group nonsense? How does that work? Why does it work? Well, I'm glad you stuck around because in this video, we're going to draw Thiel's altered transition states and something called the endo effect. It will, pr I promise it will justify why the whole out groups get the same stereochemistry as out groups and in groups get the same stereochemistry as in groups. It completely justifies that. Okay. So let's start off. I'm going to just draw a deals order reaction for you. We'll complete the reaction and then we'll draw the transition state and then I'll kind of explain why the transition state looks the way it does and it will explain the in and out rule. All right. So let me stick an electron donating group on this diene right here to just be a little redundant. Remember, it's an electron donating group because directly off our dying system, right, we have an electronegative oxygen with electrons to donate. And just to save you guys the resonance, because I bet you guys have done that in the last worksheet, uh, dealing with predicting the product and aligning dienes and dienophiles, if we do the resonance, right, the negative charge would end up down there. On the other hand, let me draw this diene right here. So I'm going to put this in group methyl group over there. And I'm going to draw an aldehyde right there. So the heat over the arrow signifies we have a deals order reaction. So let me predict the product, right? So let me draw our stock cyclohexane ring with the double bond right there. If I number these positions, one, two, three, four. Oh, I forgot to say that the positive charge will be right here. So you can prompt, you can trust me that I gave this to, gave the, the problem aligned. So we can go ahead and predict the product. This right here is position five and then position six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's just arbitrarily make, I don't know, out groups or dashes. Why not? Just for gigs. Okay. So six is also an out group, right? Because here's our pocket. Six is an out group. And since we picked dashes for our out groups, that means this in group is a wedge, right? Awesome, awesome sauce. Good stuff. So, why is it that, you know, we can just pick the out groups to be a certain thing and the in groups to be the other thing? Well, let me draw the transition state over here. So the way that this bonding occurs is that we have the dienophile, or the diene, pretty much hover over the dienophile and it kind of just sits down on it, right? It just kind of hovers and the bonds get made. So let me kind of draw that for you over here. The way I do this is I usually draw at like an ethane, a two carbon stint. Then I draw a real slanted line, another really slanted line. And then I fill in the double bonds on what is my diene. Then I'm going to draw two dotted lines going down here. Basically to match up with an ethane I would draw down here. And those are the two carbons in my dienophile, right? So basically I just drew diene hovering over dienophile. So basically we have two different scenarios here. We could have this diene hover over and have the methyl group be underneath it, right? Kind of like this. Or we could have this diene pretty much hover over it like this and have the aldehyde be out underneath it. So if you are a good OCHEM student, or you're thinking back, throwing it back to OCHEM 1, sterics might pop into your head. Well, you know, this aldehyde group's pretty sterically cumbersome. Maybe we'll, we, we want to make sure he's kind of out, away out of the picture. And normally, you'd be right. However, this is a little different. We need to kind of think of conjugation, right? Because that's the theme of this unit, chapter, whatever you want to call it, conjugation. Well, see if you can kind of wrap your head around this. When we drew resonance, right? we kind of have a conjugated system here. We do have a conjugated system here, right? We have a pure, on a hybridized p orbital here, on hybridized p orbital here, on hybridized p orbital here, right there, and an electron that can kind of align itself with all these unhybridized p orbitals. Same thing over here, on hybridized p orbital over here, on hybridized p orbital over here. This carbon right here is unhybridized, and he has a p orbital, and so does this oxygen. He's sp2 hybridized. So right, we have one, two, three, four carbons that are in a conjugated system. One, two, three, four, five atoms are in a conjugated system. So this is what the endo effect is. 
Basically, we kind of push sterics to the wayside, and we want this diene to hover over the dienophile where this aldehyde can be underneath the diene because all of these p orbitals, they kind of overlap each other and stabilize the transition state. Let me kind of show it to you on this picture because that was a lot of words. So if this is position one over here, this carbon, position two is this carbon, position three, position four, position five, and position six. Here's what I'm trying to say, and I'll draw it in brown because brown's, I don't know, ugly and stands out. Basically, at carbon number six, right, with this aldehyde, we have two options. We can put the carbonyl going out here where he's not underneath the diene, or we can have him over here where he is underneath the diene that has this O-ethyl group, right? And I'm going to draw the O-ethyl group right here. Well, remember, there's this, all, there's this massive slew of p-orbitals, right? And so does this aldehyde have. He has p-orbitals as well. So if he's underneath the diene, what we would think to be sterically bad, all of these p-orbitals that are right here, they can kind of interact with the p-orbitals in the diene, and that's a stabilizing effect for the transition state. So you can see that the out group on the dienophile wants to be in the same way, the same orientation as the out group on the diene, and that's why the in out group works. Right? Because if this out group wants to be, if this electron donating, or sorry, electron withdrawing group who is out wants to be underneath the diene, because this methyl group right here is trans to him on the double bond, he has to, by geometry, he has to be on the other side. He has to be, instead of underneath the diene, he has to be out, um, not underneath the dienophile. So do you see what I'm kind of saying? That's kind of why we can just, when we predict the product, use the in-out shortcut, because we know that the endo effect is how the transition state ends up. We know that we have all these p orbitals and they help stabilize the transition state due to conjugation. So whenever you have an electron withdrawing group or electron donating group, you know, and they're out, you want them to be underneath the diene on the dienophile. Okay, let me clean this up. We'll just practice drawing another transition state so now that I don't have to explain the endo effect. Okay, so we'll do two more examples, okay? So let me give you this diene dienophile combination and then the product. We have an O-ethyl as our electron donating group right there. So I have a little cheat sheet down here. I'm going to put an isopropyl group down here. And then I'll have a diene with this type of electron withdrawing group. Okay. So, real quick, let me just draw our little pocket. Okay. So you can see on position one, we have both an in and out group, right? Our electron donating group is out. Our electron, or sorry, just our ethyl group is in. Going around, nothing on position two. We have an isopropyl group on position three, but remember, positions two and three end up being planar, so we don't, we're not going to worry about him. Nothing on position four. On position five and six, we kind of have the same thing going on, but even though they're connected, just kind of look at one at a time. We have an out group here, and we have an out group there. So, based on the endo effect, we know that will be kind of underneath the diene in the transition state. Okay, grab a different marker here once fading a little bit. So remember, I'm going to draw diene over dienophile. And in the next example, remember how I said this is a racemic, the, this reaction produces a racemic mixture? In the next one, we'll draw dienophile over diene. But let's do this first. I usually draw my ethane, and then I draw two slanted lines like that to kind of just show I'm kind of hovering, and I'll fill in my double bonds. Then I'm going to draw two dotted lines that end up being staggered, and right here I'll connect the dots. There's my dienophile. I'm not a great artist, so if this is still a little confusing, I'm sorry. I'm just not really great at drawing spatially. So now I'm going to number my carbons. One, two, three, oops, four, five, six. Okay, now all we have to do, once you've drawn your 
I mean, you can draw this all the time, right? That nothing's gonna change except the groups you put on it, right? Now we just have to fill in our groups. So in group one, I have an out group O ethyl and a thoxy group. And remember, the out groups kind of, they wanna be under, kind of going like through the board. They wanna be where all the groups on the dienophile will be underneath, right? So I'm gonna kind of draw him coming back out to the side because he's part of that conjugated system and his P orbitals are gonna help tr uh, stabilize the transition state. At the same time, this ethyl group, he's gonna be going straight out like this. He's gonna be not involved with this whole situation at all. Nothing on position two. On position three, just go ahead and fill it in, right? We said it's gonna be planar, so it doesn't matter. Just kind of stick them on. Nothing on position four. All right, so now on five and six, these atoms are going to kind of participate in that transition state stabilization, AKA the endo effect. So they're gonna be wanted, they're gonna to wanna to be underneath the diene. So let's draw them like this. A line to my carbonyl carbon. I'm gonna draw a line to an oxygen. He's connected to another carbonyl carbon and he's connected to the dyne. So it doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to have the right connections and you kinda of have to hint that you know that this is underneath the dyne. Okay, let's do one more example. I'll, I'll do the dyne file over top of the dyne and then we'll close the book on conjugation. To finish this video out, let's take the same exact diels alder reaction we just did, but now we're going to draw the transition state with the dyne, dyne file hovering over the diene. Because like I said, this reaction, the diels alder reaction, produces a racemic mixture, so we should be able to draw both transition states. So I'm gonna number my carbons over here. One, two, three, four, like we just did. And then five and six. Draw my little pocket of the ring forming. Okay, so now, same deal. Draw your diene first, okay? So I draw that little ethyl piece right there and then two kind of slanted lines. Now, and I'll fill in my double bonds. Now, instead of drawing those dotted lines down, the best part is all you have to do is draw them up. So I'm gonna go up, draw them a little higher, and then connect the dots with your dienophile. And then number your carbons, fill your groups in, make sure they're going the right way, and then you're done. So I'm gonna go with one, two, three, four, and four attaches to five, right? So five and six, six is over there. Okay, so remember, the ethoxy group is out. He wants to be kind of going this way, kind of underneath where the groups attached to the dienophile are gonna go. So I'm gonna switch, swing him over here. And remember, this ethyl group, he's an in-group, He's going the other way. He doesn't want to be a part of what's going on. So I'm going to draw him going straight out like that. All right, awesome. Nothing on two. Remember on three, we said this isopropyl group is going to be planar. So just kind of throw him on there. I'm going to move the three over here. Can't go wrong. Just make sure you put him in the right place. Nothing on four. And remember on five and six, we have two out groups. They just happen to be connected. So they're not going this way. They're going kind of through the plane of the board line from the dienophile carbon to the carbonyl carbon. He's attached to an oxygen. That oxygen is attached to another carbonyl. And that carbonyl is attached back to the dienophile. So you can see that this ethoxy group is kind of going the same way as the group on the dienophile. Okay, I have plenty of practice for you guys drawing diels alder transition states. Make sure you can draw them. You understand the endo effect and then kind of just understand why the in-out rule works. It's because of the endo effect. Okay guys, this pretty much closes the book on conjugation. So in the next kind of series, we're gonna talk about benzene. We're all gonna be doing chemistry on a benzene ring. I promise you it's pretty interesting and pretty fun. See you later.